Hello, I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I am here today with a not 8mm Mauser rifle. So let's get into it. This is my Ishapur 2A1, and if you look under the bolt, it will have these markings. 7.62mm 2A1 RFI 1966. So there is a long-standing debate in the gun community about whether or not you can shoot 7.62 ammo, I'm sorry, 308 ammo in a 7.62 chamber. People will say these following arguments and maybe some others. The first is that maximum pressure for 7.62 chamber is 60,191 PSI, CIP, and we'll get to that in a second. The set and a 308 pressure is 62,000 SAMI. So the 308 is higher than the 762. They'll also say that 762 has a different standard for headspace. It was wider because they were using um, ammo that was military made and you couldn't always trust it to be perfect. And then also they will say that 762 ammo has a different case wall. It is thicker so that it can handle the issues with that different standard for headspace. So on the other side of the argument, people will say that they fired so many rounds through their certain rifle and they've had absolutely no problems. And they'll use that as one of their arguments. It'll be normally be like 500 rounds through my foul or this many rounds through my Ishapur or this many rounds through my FR8, any number of other guns. Secondly, people will notice that the pressures for those rounds are measured differently. The 308 round was measured with a SAMI spec and the 7.62 round was measured with a CIP spec. So they will say that, you know, I don't know the whole argument there, but basically it is that they're close enough and the 308 is actually lower pressure if you do this the right way. I don't have enough uh, experience to tell you about that. And then finally, they will point to the fact that there are very few firsthand accounts of issues with 308 and a 7.62 NATO. The only one that I could actually find was a reloader who had reloaded rounds um, from a 7.62 ammo with 308 specs, and then because there was that thicker case wall, there was less space and therefore a higher pressure curve that caused ruptured cases. So I wanted to test this with some ammos because where I am, I have limited ammo access. So when I first bought this gun, I bought this 7.62x51 Magtech ammo, and then I'm testing it, comparing it to a Arms Corps 308 Winchester that I bought locally. Now, I want to add some caveats. And the first is, what I want to see is if this ammo is safe in this rifle. That does not mean that a different 308 round will be safe in this rifle, or that this 308 ammo will be safe in your 7.62 rifle. I am checking this ammo with this rifle. So that aside, the next thing I would like to say is I am not recommending that you shoot any ammo in your gun. This is specifically for me, and if you choose to apply it to you, that is your choice. I am not liable for any decisions that you make. So let's get into it. I decided to shoot these side by side so you can see both, and then at the end we'll talk about it, along with the conversation I had with a gunsmith about this. So let's talk about the data. I am concerned primarily with two numbers. The first is the velocity high, and the second is the velocity average. I'm concerned with the velocity high because I'm concerned about one, overpressured cartridge causing problems, causing parts breakages, or a catastrophic malfunction in my gun. Secondly, I'm worried about the velocity average because I want to know if sustained use of this ammo will cause problems with that gun. Most likely, with most ammos, you are not going to have a problem shooting 10 rounds with a gun, but if you shoot 100, 200, 300, that's when you'll start to have certain issues. So we're going to operate under the assumption that the Magtech ammo is safe to shoot since it is 7.62 by 51 ammo. The velocity high was 2,836, 
and the velocity average was 2,787 feet per second. Now, the velocity high for the arm score ammo was 2,863, which is 27 feet per second higher than the MagTech ammo. And the velocity average is 2,847, which is 60.2 feet per second higher than the velocity average of the MagTech ammo. So, <clears throat> from the velocities alone, if this ammo is unsafe to shoot because of that 60.2 feet per second higher average, then that would mean that this MagTech ammo is not safe to shoot because those numbers are fairly close. Now, I'd also like to note some other things. There are signs of overpressure that you can see with certain rounds. For example, there is difficulty of extraction, there is flattened primers, there is extruded primers, or what kind of looks like a small volcano that goes into the space between the firing pin and the firing pin hole in the bolt face. All of those types of things. Now, with the MagTech ammo, I did experience a little bit of difficulty with extraction. That could be any number of things, that could be small burrs in the chamber. However, since we're assuming that this ammo is safe to shoot, that shouldn't cause too much of a concern. With the arms core ammo, I experienced nothing. It extracted very cleanly and easily. It did not have overly flattened primers or protruded primers. And I will get you pictures of all of that so that you can see what the head, uh, head cases look like. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary to me with the arms core ammo that did not also seem apparent with the MagTech ammo. So I've decided that I am more than willing to use this 308 ammo in my 762 rifle. However, I wanted to conclude this video by talking to you about a conversation I had with Caleb from Brownells, and they did a quick, hit, quick tips video where they talked about this very issue, 762 versus 308. So I posted this meme on Instagram, and Caleb responded saying that they had done their Brownells YouTube video. So I said I, I had seen it and I don't know enough about the topic, but basically it didn't answer all of the questions for me because I had some issues with that uh, SAMI versus CIP spec thing and I just, I didn't know enough and uh, I saw people saying things that would have reverted what they had said in the video. So he responded saying that he has seen some negative effects of 308, which is higher pressure in 762, particularly semi-automatic rifles. It was, they would get worn out due to overgassing. He said he had seen cracked locking lugs or bent operating rods. See, the operating rod thing makes me think of specifically the M14 or M1A, those types of guns, but all semi-automatic guns. So he also mentioned the, um, the issues with headspace and all of the different things that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So I said thank you and mentioned that he was the first person that I had talked to that actually gave me a negative experience regarding this. <clears throat> and I asked him if he had seen these problems in both guns as well, or if it was only semi-automatic rifles. He said, yes, he has seen them, but it's much less common and much less catastrophic. These issues have been destroyed cases, but not destroyed rifles. He said that generally those bolt action rifles are built to a higher spec than the semi-automatic counterparts. So my Ishapur, for example, is likely safer, even though it may be older, it's safer because it has less of those tolerances built in. And so I made the question comparing it to Turkish 8mm ammo because that's a little bit more something that I am familiar with. I know that Turkish 8mm ammo is safe in a Mauser. It's probably not safe in a Gewehr 88. However, it's definitely not safe in semi-automatic or automatic rifles. And he said that that was a very good comparison. So... If you have a semi-automatic gun, be much more careful about using 308 in that 7.62 gun. Now, I'm not your mommy, so I'm not going to tell you not to. That is your job to be the judge of, but you should be more cautious. So because that Ishapur is a blast to shoot, I shot the rest of this box out there that day. However, I plan on definitely buying more ammo to shoot in that gun, so this will not be the last time that you get to see it, and I'm definitely going to continue this series with different 308 ammo. Maybe even do some stuff with higher pressured hunting loads to see if that is safe as well in an Ishapur. Thank you so much for watching, and if you are want to see more of this type of content, subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to see.